right, so I got it all back together and cranked it and could hear a lot of resistance, metal on metal. So took a break. It's uh, next day after work. And today what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put about a teaspoon or so, <clears throat> excuse me, of oil down inside the spark plug. And then I'm going to crank the motor by hand uh, so I can lube the upper part of the cylinder wall before we crank it because effectively right now it's a dry motor. And without that lubrication, I'll just smoke the new um, uh, piston and, uh, and cylinder that I just put on there. Uh, so let's do that and see if uh, and see if that was the last step we needed to get this thing cranking. A little 10 weight 30, and I'm actually just going to do a couple of squirts. So the idea being, imagine this is sitting uh, in in the quad. <clears throat> I'll put this in the uh, in the uh, spark plug hole, and we'll get some oil built up here that'll seep down around the rings. But also, as I manually crank the piston up and down, it'll coat the cylinder walls and that should free things up to allow it to crank and start spark plug spark plug three quarter inch now i'm going to manually turn the motor over a couple of times I haven't fired this thing yet, but let's see if it cranks and what it shows for compression. Building 75 PSI now. It gets dark so fast this time of year. It's only a little after four o'clock. Heading out to keep working on putting this top end back together. Uh, but it's dark and it's windy and it's cold. So hopefully I have some good luck tonight. Um, Cause otherwise it's just miserable cold. Oh, my doors are frozen shut. Freeze my coffee. Turn on my heater. Lights. Headlamp. Should work all right. So, uh, I want to point out something. The Timing chain tensioner. I had trouble getting this in 
And what I had done is I couldn't get this to, to compress to put this in. So I got longer bolts and then cinched it down in thinking to myself, boy, that's there's got to be a better way. Uh, so there is a better way, not only a better way, but a proper way. And the way I have this done right now is putting an excessive amount of tension on the chain. Once it is, uh, once the tensioner is out, um, I don't think that it's coming back in, putting a lot of pressure on the chain. There's so much pressure on the timing chain, I believe that's why I'm having so much trouble cranking the motor. Uh, and the reason I believe that is I had this out the other evening, I'm um, just kind of reinspecting my work because everything was tighter than I thought it should be. I thought I needed to oil the, the rings, which, which I've done, but uh, when it was out, motor was spinning freely. When it's in, not so much. So going to take this out, and what I expect to find is under this 10 millimeter bolt, a very small flathead um, screwdriver and uh, screw, and I'm expecting to be able to turn that clockwise to release the spring and recoil this back in so that I can put this in and then all the way clockwise should lock it open and then maybe a quarter turn back, unlock it, pops in, goes to where it should be and at that point the motor should spin freely. So that's what I'm going to take a look at doing right now. All right, I guess it's not getting any warmer. Tell you what, let's not put the coffee under the ATV where I'm going to drop mud and grease into it unless you like a little uh, little motor oil seasoning. Oh, cheapo depot. Try number two. All right, so I can't get at this with a screwdriver right now because the carb is in the way. I could take the carb off, but uh, I'm going to take the whole thing off for this inspection. Probably be easier to show and demonstrate if I do. And pop, there we have it. Maybe difficult to see in there, but there is a flat head all the way down in. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver. All right, smallest screwdriver I have. And you can see clockwise is winding that spring down. And I believe there should be a little click that'll hold it. Ah, look at that. No click, but as soon as it was wound all the way in, it's holding it. Ah, it's amazing what you learn when you slow down and do things right. Now I can get my screwdriver in there. I'm all the way clockwise. And you see it, it wants to spin it back. Take the tension right off. There we go. And just like that, we're good. And still very nice. All right, so that was something I had done incorrectly, which resulted in a very tight timing chain. Also one of those things that could result in a timing chain breaking. Uh, never mind, it was just uh, you couldn't spin the motor, motor fast enough to get it to start, so uh, knew something was wrong there. So let's spin it with the compression tester in and let's see what we have for compression now that we've taken the resistance off and the timing chain, that's all set. Everything's cranked down, tightened up. Uh, let's see, we were at 48, 49 PSI. Let's see where we are now. Four PSI up, or six PSI, we're at 54. So one thing that we didn't do is I didn't inspect the valves. And ultimately, I think that's gonna have to be done. There's a new top end, new rings, new cylinder, new gaskets, tightened down nice, still very low compression. So we're gonna take this off, we're gonna take the head off. And while I did uh, a bit of an inspection for how it was seating, 
that compression is still very low. You know, <clears throat> before I just keep going and making some of these assumptions, I think it's time for me to do a, a proper leak down test. One of those things I should have done early on, but you know, was fairly confident that the cylinder and the piston were bad and, the, and they were shot, but it doesn't seem to be my only issue. So let's see if a leak down test uh, reveals anything. Alrighty, let me go plug some air in outside. Alright, so I've run air in and adjusted this down to zero PSI. And so really without the line hooked into the spark plug, you pop this up, twist this knob to adjust to zero. Uh, then you can press it back in, lock it, hook up your line. And now with this popped out, I'm going to start putting air to the cylinder. And I'm going slow and careful because I do not have the motor locked and the pressure could spin the motor. And now I have eye safety on. So I'm hitting it with about 10 PSI and there's still nothing, but I can hear. So there's a big air blowing out of the, the intake. And I'm going to take the exhaust off so I can listen there as well. Uh, am I sure that I'm on top dead center? I may not be. I'm lined up here, but I might not be on actual top dead center. So let me do a full 180 of that and try again. Turn off the air. Let's disconnect for safety. Ever feel like you're always one step behind losing tools? Top dead. Again, I'm not braced, so... Uh, Proceed carefully here. Twenty psi is just flying out around that uh, that intake valve. So I only have this at forty psi right now. I can't even hold back the amount of air coming out of there bring this down 20 psi if I put my hand over it oh. 10 psi okay doing that I think what I might be hearing now is a little leak around the cap here I'm gonna take this cap off uh, and listen. I'm spinning the motor and I'm watching the valve to see what triggers open. There it goes open with my top dead center indicator 180 degrees off. So it's open, it's pulling in for the intake stroke. It just clicked closed. And again, we give it some air. I'm gonna plug it up with my hand, the intake. And uh, you probably weren't able to see that, but the pressure was starting to spin the motor when I plugged the intake. Get myself back on the top dead center. And again, carefully go at this. Just 10 PSI. I can hold 10 PSI. And at true top dead center, it doesn't seem to be able to spin it.
I at least have one more problem here. I at least have an issue with the uh, the intake valve. So I'm gonna take the head back off here. I am not hearing anything else. And I wouldn't expect to hear anything else with a new piston rings. So it would seem that around my intake valve, big leak. Next time I'll use my valve spring kit, take these valves out, take a look. Maybe we'll have to do a, a valve lapping or something. I'm curious. It, it would appear good from here. But I wonder if there's just a lot of carbon buildup. Just what does it look like on the other side of those valves? Because we heard a pretty big leak coming through.